I played 100 gulags in a row in order to become a gulag expert. And while playing through all these gulags, I recorded a full spreadsheet of all the data I could gather on every gulag I played. Using all of this data put together, I've been able to discover some really important gulag trends, some key tips, and also not one, but two of the best gulag strategies that are guaranteed to get you respawning back into Caldera. So let's waste no time and get into the biggest tip I've found with this version of the gulag. The Caldera gulag is honestly all about sound. Sound is your best friend and your worst enemy. This is basically because the map is far small enough that you can almost always hear where the enemy's moving. The sound in the Caldera gulag is also pretty unique in comparison to some of our older gulags that we've played, like the showers, for example. And this is because there's multiple different floor surfaces throughout the map that all make different sounds as you move across them. For example, the sound of moving through the dirt tunnel is very different to the sound of someone moving through the hut in the middle of the map. Start learning the different distinct sounds and you'll be able to quickly identify where enemies are on the map using direction as well as the actual sound you hear. Now, in regards to my data, I recorded three main things after every gulag I played. The weapon type we were given, which route the enemy took through the map, and finally, did I win or not? So let's jump into this data and so I found starting off with the weapon type. Now, if you're like me, you probably tend to stay away from pistols and shotguns in Warzone, unless they're akimbo and they're broken, in which case I'm definitely jumping on the bandwagon. Well, luckily in my gulags, I only came across seven rounds where I was using a pistol or a shotgun in my 100 games. Assault rifles easily led the stats in terms of which weapon we were going to get, with a 49% chance of getting one. SMGs were at 28%, so in second place, and in third place were LMGs at 16%. With all of your gulag weapons being attachmentless and there being a joint 65 percent chance of you getting either an assault rifle or an LMG, I've really found that this gulag favours the slower playstyle. Let's move on to enemy routes. Now, I took the three lanes of the map and I gave them some simple names that I'm going to refer to them as. These are going to be the tunnel, the middle, and the outside. Now, the middle lane of the map through the hut proved to be the most popular easily, with 55% of my enemies running straight in there. At first, I was confused why most people run into the hut, but I quickly found that it's basically because most streamers and pros like to still favor that kind of cracked out playstyle of getting in there quick. So a lot of people see them, want to emulate them, want to copy them. It's understandable. The second most popular was the tunnel route. So going through there, that was a 30% pick rate in my gulags for my enemies. And finally, in last place, was a 15% pick rate of the train tracks outside route where you go around the train cards. This is where I'm going to give you my second big tip, and it's how you can get a decent amount of info on where your enemy might go before the gulag even starts. Just before your fight begins, you can see the enemy's silhouette right in front of you. This is really crucial. You will find many, many players already turning and looking in the direction that they're gonna play that gulag. If you see someone turn towards the tunnel, it's pretty much certain that they're gonna run that way unless they're really trying to big brain you, but I didn't see that happen very often. Okay, let's get on to what everyone wants to know about, which is my win rate. How many of these 100 gulags did I win? Well, I thought that rather than just giving you my win rate over the 100 games, I'd take my win rate of the first 50 games and compare it to the last 50 games and see, did I improve? Did the stats that I was looking at from the spreadsheet actually help me out? Well, in my first 50 games, I came out with a 54% win rate in my gulag. And whilst that is technically meaning that I'm more likely to win than lose, it's not by much. I knew at this point that I wanted to start using more of the data I gathered and actually trying to put together some strategies based on it that I knew would help me out. Well, it definitely worked out for me because I brought my Gulag win rate in the second 50% of games up to a 78% win rate. So after 100 Gulags, what did I actually find were the best strategies? Well, as I said at the beginning, I've got two of them for you. Let's start off with a more slow and conserved strategy that I really think works for those no attachment ARs and LMGs. Remember I said there's about a 65% chance that I was going to get one of these in my game. So I use this one a lot. In this strategy, you always start by heading for the tunnel and you need to do this as fast as possible. It's basically the only fast bit of this strategy. As I said, it was more of a slow and conserved strategy, but the first two seconds, while you have a bit of breathing room, there's not going to be too much sound because the enemy's quite far away. The reason the tunnel is almost always the best side of the map to push, especially with a longer range weapon, is because of the limited angles 
of engagement that you can have enemies come from. When you go into the tunnel, there's basically three places that enemies could appear from. You've got straight ahead of you down the other end of the tunnel. You've got the door from the hut that comes out, or you might sometimes have an enemy run all the way through the middle of the map and get behind you quick. But if they do that, they're giving away their position with so much sound running over the wooden floor. So it's quite easily counterable. Let's compare this to the outside side of the map, which a lot of people will think is very similar, but you've got the big train cart in the way. And that actually adds another angle because they can come around from both sides of the train cart. If you decide to pre-aim one side of the cart, there's always a coin flip going on that they might just pop up from the other side, be looking in your direction, and then you're screwed. And then the middle of the map, I don't even really have to explain. There's almost infinite ways it seems you can get shot from. From the tunnel, from outside, from their spawn, from the window. There's just a lot of angles you can get destroyed from. So I head to the tunnel, I get ADS'd in, and I start moving around the corner, pre-aiming the end of the tunnel. And if they are at the end of the tunnel, I gun them down. If I realize that there's no one coming from the end of the tunnel, I'm seeing, okay, they're probably not gone this way. Then I'm focusing my attention, looking through the hut as I move round, uh, looking through that door. And honestly, as I showed earlier in the video, there's only a 15% chance that I would find someone starting their game going through the outside tracks area, leaving an 85% chance that the enemy is going to be in one of the two places that I have checked. Now, for all of you guys out there who want a bit of a quicker, more cracked strategy, I have one for you too. I like to use this definitely if I've got one of those pesky shotguns, uh, but also if I've got an SMG and, you know, I'm just feeling a bit frisky. In this scenario, you can surprise enemies by going the special fourth route, and this is jumping through the window into the hut like a madman. Enemies that have pushed middle, and that was 55% of them for me over my 100 gulags, they're going to be pretty consistently shocked by this play. They're not going to expect someone flying through the window just across from their field of view. And a lot of the time, if you just jump in, you aim towards the table in the middle, you'll find many people with their pants down. If you jump in the window, you don't see anyone and you don't hear anything, then you've got to commit to the rush at this point, really, because otherwise you're going to be way too open from all the angles. So I find myself running through the hut to the outside and towards the tunnel from their side of the spawn. Once again, this leads to me covering off the two places where I found most enemies went, uh, but just coming at it from a far more aggressive style. So these two strategies, just a simple, consistent one, holding angles with an AR and LMG, and a bit of a quicker wild card for when you've got an SMG in your hand, these have led me to skyrocket my Gulag win rate for Caldera, and it's making me far more comfortable that if I die, because I high on the map, I can get back in and join my squad without them having to waste money getting me back. So I hope these strategies work out well for you guys if you do want to use them. And if you found this video informative, then please do leave a like on the video. It really helps me out and shows your appreciation. How about you leave a comment down below telling me what your favorite Gulag strategy is. I want to know what they are. Maybe you don't want to give away your secrets, but come on, let us all know about them down in the comments below. It'll be awesome to hear from you guys. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.